We're looking at this, this little piece of metal, this heat shield, as MSI calls it. That's the subject of our ire for today. MSI brandishes this little shroud as a heat shield while simultaneously claiming that it's sort of a heat sink, ignoring the fact that the concepts are different, opposites really. We decided to break this out of the full Gaming Pro Carbon Z270 review and analyze this one little piece of MSI's engineering and marketing. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by Catalyst Energy Mints. Dubbed the energy drink killer, Catalyst Mints have been endorsed by celebrities such as T-Pain, did not know that, and continue to grow within the gaming industry. Use code GAMERSNEXUS for 5% off at the link in the description below. The thing we were most immediately interested in with the MSI Gaming Pro Carbon Z270 motherboard, this one, was its SSD shield, and that's what this is right here. MSI says that this reduces EMI, or interference, basically not really much of an issue with SSDs. Nonetheless, it is supposed to reduce EMI, but more in our ballpark of testing, it's supposed to help with thermals, and they do that apparently by using the world's thinnest thermal pad on the inside of the heat shield. And again, two different things here, heat sinks and shields. We tested this shield or sink or whatever it is with M.2 SSDs that we know to get pretty hot, like this HyperX Predator SSD that is uh, loaded with thermocouples right now. That's the wiring coming off of it. So that was used to test and see basically does this thing help or hurt temperatures? Because if you think about it, it's sitting there on the board uh, sort of in this area over an M.2 device and that's supposed to somehow help with the heat? So that was, the, that was the question is, does it actually hurt temperature more than it helps? The full motherboard review, including VRM discussion and analysis will be a separate content piece, so you'll get the most depth possible. But this is really just a focus on the one item. The full testing methodology, as always, is available in the article linked in the description below. That also contains some additional information on the motherboard layout, thermal testing, things like that, all defined in the article. It's worth a watch and a read for the thermal analysis if you're not sure how we do our testing. MSI's website claims that this is a, quote, heat shield and that it also, quote, lowers temperature and prevents thermal throttling. So it's, it, there's a few problems here. The language is one thing, we'll get to that in a moment, but the shield enshrouds just the top side of the SSD, so it's not a full coverage of an M.2 drive and a lot of these have SMD components on either side of the stick. So that's important, first of all. Uh, also, the shield on their site is advertised as being able to protect the SSD from physical harm. Not sure what kind of physical harm would befall your M.2 SSD as it's tucked away in the middle of the board under a video card and whatever else might be there but I suppose it would be shielded from said harm. So first of all, again, let's get some language straight and then we'll go into the testing and see what the differences are with and without this thing. Language, they call it a heat shield, but they act like it's a heat sink. The difference is with a heat shield, you're trying to keep the heat away from something. So this, the idea of this as a shield would be that perhaps you put it here to cover the drive and then if you have a GPU that's hanging over it, like if you're running multi-GPU and the second video card is sitting over top of the M.2 slot, which of course would be dumping heat into that drive directly, that's not ideal, then it would be a heat shield. It would be hopefully protecting or keeping some of that heat away from touching things like the flash modules directly. As a heat sink, what it's trying to do and what it does by way of its thermal pad, however useless this one may be, is it is trying to conduct heat or energy in the form of heat away from the SSD. So for this one uh, and most SSDs actually, you're going to end up with the label on the top side that's connected to that thermal pad. Not the most effective setup in the world. You'd probably want to peel that label off for the best efficacy, although uh, some do have built-in thermal pads and things like that, so you'd end up hurting your performance. Now also with a heat sink, as you'll see with any heat sink that we've filmed in the past, you'd want a sink to conduct energy in the form of heat, again, from the SMDs, but theoretically you'd want to further dissipate it by either some sort of cooling apparatus or just a fin array and then hope that the ambient is strong enough to dissipate through the fins. This has neither. We can perhaps chalk up the shield and heat sink 
differences to a potential language barrier between the Taiwan-based engineering team and US-based marketing team, but that's giving an awful lot of slack. As for thermal properties, it's an interesting test subject. By looking at the thing, it's got the top side of the SSD covered, but nothing on the bottom side. So we're soaking heat from one side of the M.2 stick and leaving the other bare and in a hot air pocket of the Shield's own making on the motherboard side of the stick. Further, the Shield is just a passive block with a thermal pad. There's no way to dissipate the heat once it's accumulated. And because MSI doesn't use actual fins here, it's got really no chance at all of ever shedding or even distributing that heat without a side panel case fan. So the process for this setup was to first use a thermal camera to identify hotspots on the M.2 SSD, accounting for emissivity pretty easily since we're only measuring an all black surface and not dealing with any reflective material. Huge note here, like we talked about in our previous thermal camera PSA, the point of the camera is not to conduct the actual test because one, uh, you really get nothing of value when you point it at this thing. And that's not because it's bad, it's because it's shiny and it's not the surface of the drive versus pointing it here. That doesn't tell us anything other than the temperature of that surface and whatever reflective properties it may have. So that's not why we use the camera. We use the camera to rapidly prototype and figure out on the bare drive, where do the thermal couples belong? And in this case, there's one on the bottom side on the flash module closest to the pins and the top side closest to the pins because in testing those areas were shown to have upwards of 90 celsius in their worst case scenarios the ssd was burned in with iometer doing a sequential 128 kb writes for 60 minutes here's a chart of the results this is in delta t we'll get to the sort of total results in a moment and that's important because we're subtracting ambient second to second for the most accurate results we'll show the other numbers next Without MSI's shield, just using the bare drive, we're seeing numbers that plot the HyperX Predator M.2 SSD at 22.15C for the top flash module, and that's idle, and 61.32C for the load temperature. Compared to the version with the heatsink, the top flash module is now operating at an idle temperature of 20.22C, so about 2 Celsius lower, and a load temperature of about 60.3 Celsius, or about 1 C lower. That's an improvement of 1C for the top of the M.2 SSD, and because of how we're testing, that's not within margin of error. That is repeatable and provable, and we have calibrated the thermocouples. That said, let's look at the real secret here. The underside module temperature shows that adding the shield means we have no escape for the warm air generated between the M.2 device and the motherboard. Further, there is no shielding contacting the SSD components on the underside. This means that we're seeing a somewhat impressively bad 4 Celsius temperature hike on the bottom side cooling for both idle and load when we add MSI's heat shield or heat sink or whatever it is. Let's move over to the other chart that's accounting for ambient differently. Just to really drive home how critical this 4 Celsius swing is, we see that we're hitting 93.6 Celsius versus 89.6 Celsius when under load. That's enough to start entering throttle territory for some SSDs, meaning that you potentially lose some performance to keep the thing under temperature control. The controller temperature and its internal sensor placed by Kingston is measuring about four Celsius higher idle and four to five Celsius higher under load for the heat shield versus no heat shield or just the bare drive. So we learned that the only thing that this is shielding the SSD from is proper cooling. MSI should either ditch it all together or they should make it wrap around the entire M.2 stick so that it's actually making full contact with every SMD uh, and hopefully there's some better dissipation method. But that seems like it's asking a whole lot for something that's really ultimately meant to be a marketing gimmick. And that's not necessarily to uh, degrade what it's trying to do because motherboards by and large are marketing gimmicks these days, so much as on the CPU now, there's not a whole lot left to the manufacturers. It's got good intentions. It's just really poorly executed. It was poorly designed. I don't know that it was even tested because we're seeing worse results with it other than the one Celsius reduction on the top side, I guess. Uh, and the improvement there is just definitely not worth it. It is patently false that this is a heat sink in a way that would actually benefit the user. In fact, the claim is that this would reduce the chance of thermal throttling. And from this, it could increase. <laughs> we didn't necessarily see any thermal throttling with this particular drive. If you use something like a faster stick than what we've got here, this older now 
HyperX Predator. This is a bit aged these days. If you use something a bit faster than this that's going to be under more duress when doing intensive workloads, it could start entering that territory of throttling a bit earlier uh, than what we see here. So overall, this motherboard will be doing the full review separately, as I said. The board itself is not bad. It's actually a bit better than the out-of-box Gigabyte Gaming 7 that we reviewed, though that should now have the BIOS update, which would theoretically reverse that statement, but I'll be testing that soon. The board itself is pretty good. It overclocks well. We were hitting 5.1 gigahertz on it, and on weaker boards, we weren't able to do that with the 7700K. The board layout, it's good. The feature set overall, pretty comprehensive. It's affordable in the price point. It's $165 or something. But that doesn't excuse this uh, being... If this shield were just useless, that's one thing. But uh, I don't want you to buy the board and stick your M.2 SSD under this and lose performance without knowing it or just increase the heat for no reason without losing performance because that's why would you do that? That's dumb. Uh, especially when you're inside of a case, we tested all open air. Inside of a case, you might have a case ambient of 30 to 40 Celsius, as we've shown with most of the cases we've reviewed. And that means your temperature increases substantially. So that, that's another interesting test case that was not looked at, but the performance would only worsen. So uh, takeaway here is stick around for the full review. The board might be worth buying for you for a Z270 platform, but if you do buy it, uh, hopefully it's at a slightly reduced price and just no M.2 SSDs under this. That's, that's all this is setting out to say. So thank you for watching. As always, click the Patreon link in the post troll video or go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus for a pathway to help us directly produce this type of content. It is fairly research intensive and we use expensive thermocouples. They're only expensive because they're self-adhesive, which is really cool. Subscribe for more content and the review. I'll see you all next time.